Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I know it has been uh, quite some time since our uh, last, last video but uh, here we are. Um, in this particular session we will be looking at the third part of your uh, 10 common um, uh, interview questions as part of your uh, EC2 service. Now we have already covered part 1 uh, where I covered 10 uh, common questions then we had part 2 where again I covered uh, 10 common questions and then this is the final part where we will be covering 10 more common interview questions. Now the reason we have uh, so many questions with this particular service is because this is one of the very uh, important service that we have in AWS and this is one of the very commonly uh, used service and uh, uh, you can expect a lot of questions from uh, this particular service as part of your uh, uh, interview process. All right, so this will be the last uh, part uh, as part of your EC2 uh, service. So the first question you can expect here is uh, what is the default number on the number of instances that you can launch in an AWS region? So here, you know, ideally when you create your AWS account, there is a default uh, uh, limitation that is set as to uh, how many instances you can launch, how many uh, security groups you can create. So there's a default limitation that is set. So here, the question is uh, what is the default limitation on the number of instances that you can launch so the default limit for the instances that you are going to launch it is usually quite low all right so by default the limitation is set to 20 ec2 instances per region and this includes all the instances set up on your aws account so this is basically uh, at a time uh, concurrently we can launch uh, 20 ec2 instances by default now if you want to launch more instances you will need to uh, raise a request uh, a service limit in uh, increase request with aws and aws will increase the limit for you so you can increase uh, you can request a limit increase through the aws support center so you can create a case um, uh, specify your request and then aws will increase the limit for you the next question you can expect is how can you access your Linux based EC2 instances if you uh, lost the private key. Now we know that uh, public key and private key is basically key pairs is what we use to log into the EC2 instances. Now in uh, scenarios where your private key is lost how can you regain the access to your Linux instances again this is a very commonly asked uh, questions and uh, uh, many people fail uh, to answer this question so the answer for this would be there are ideally four methods using which you can uh, regain the access to your uh, linux based ec2 instances if you lost the key pair so you can make use of the user data the boot up script that you have so you can generate a new key pair and add that public key to the uh, server so there are steps that you have to follow there is a script that you can make use of um, I'll, I'll make one video for this particular scenario but uh, you can make use of the user data where you'll write a script so for this you'll first generate the key pair and then using the script you'll upload the public key to the server and then using the private key you'll log into the instance that's one method then you can make use of the AWS systems manager service so in this uh, we have a document called AWS support uh, reset access document you can make use of this document run the document to uh, recover your uh, lost key pair so basically again this will help you to uh, regain the access in case you have lost your uh, key pair to the ec2 instance the third method you have is uh, uh, making use of the amazon ec2 instance connect so uh, instance connect is another feature another way that you can log into your EC2 instances. So if your instance is Amazon uh, Linux 2 or later, including Amazon Linux 2023, then you can make use of the EC2 instance connect to connect to the instance. So this is when um, when you launch your EC2 instances. So here, this is my uh, console. So when you select the server, here on the right hand side, you can see the connect option and under this you can make use of this uh, sorry this one ec2 instance connect so systems manager session manager um, that's another option you have uh, ec2 instance connect so this is the other method you have and the last method you have is uh, making use of the ec2 serial console which is this option if you have set this up you can use this to um, uh, access the server so 
if you have turned on the EC2 serial console for your Linux machine, then you can use this to troubleshoot uh, supported Nitro based instances. So there are certain instances that supports this EC2 serial console login. You can use this to uh, regain the access to your server. So these are the four methods you have. So using the user data, then uh, systems manager document, then EC2 instance connect, and then finally your EC2 serial console. Now, uh, some bonus points that you can mention so method 1 2 and 3 requires uh, for you to stop and start the instance so uh, executing the boot up script uh, the you will need to stop and start the server then um, your systems manager that will also need to start, start stop and start the server and then the ec2 instance connect will also you will need to stop and start the server now there are a few important points that you will need to uh, remember if your instance is using the instance store volume as or has um, instance store volumes containing data then the data will be lost if you stop the server so be sure that your backup any data that you want to keep uh, on these instance store volumes then stopping and restarting the instance will change the public ip of the instance so if the public if the instance has a public ip even that will change so it is a best practice that you you make use of an elastic ip address instead of a public ip address when routing external traffic to your instance the next question you can expect is what is the use of amis amazon machine uh, images for your ec2 instances so ami stands for amazon machine image and this is simply your template so whenever we want to launch our ec2 instances we make use of the amis to specify which operating system we want to use any pre-configured configurations the uh, volume types we want to use all that information is specified by making use of your ami so this is simply a template which can be used to launch your uh, ec2 instances and these amis are used to create your machines the virtual machines with the predefined configurations uh, and this includes your operating systems your application servers your settings and all that information so amis are mandatory so without an ami you cannot launch your instance uh, so simply if you want to specify which operating system you want to use for your ec2 instance we can make use of your ami for that the next question you can expect is explain the concept of uh, ec2 instances root device and the block devices so you know uh, when we launch your ec2 instances we have your uh, root device as well as a block device you'll have to explain about them so the root device is the main storage device used by an instance to boot the operating system so root device is where your os related data will be stored so if you're on your uh, windows machine you can think of this as your uh, c drive so this c drive is your root device which will contain all of your os related uh, uh, information and the boot device is any additional storage volumes that you're attaching to your ec2 instances for uh, storing your data any additional ebs volumes that you're attaching to your ec2 instances we can call that as your block devices so by default the volume that gets attached to your instance is your root uh, device and any additional volumes that you attach to your instances is your block devices the next question you can expect is uh, how does cloudwatch help in monitoring your uh, ec2 instances now in aws whenever we talk about uh, monitoring your resources cloudwatch is the service that we can make use of all right now how does it help you to monitor your ec2 instances so amazon cloudwatch provides monitoring and management uh, services so you can use this to monitor your resources your applications the services that you're running in aws so anything you want to monitor in aws cloudwatch is what we make use of now how does it do it it helps you to collect and track your metrics like your CPU utilization, your uh, disk utilization, your network utilization, all those things can be monitored. It helps you to monitor your log files so you can uh, store your application logs, any applications that you're running on your EC2 instances, you can store those logs in Amazon CloudWatch. You can also set up alarms 
for your uh, 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 any metrics like let's say you want to monitor your CPU utilization and if it reaches 80 percentage you can set up an alarm and then you can set up a notify step as well as to what action uh, you want to take so let's say your CPU utilization is eight, at 80 percentage you want to send out a notification we can utilize that as well so CloudWatch is your monitoring service that we have in AWS and anything you want to monitor you can do that by making use of your CloudWatch service the next question you can expect is can you resize an EBS volume attached to a running EC2 instance so uh, let's say you have an EC2 instance and you have attached an EBS volume to that EC2 instance now can we resize that maybe increase the storage capacity or decrease the storage capacity can we do that now you can do that you can resize an EBS volume when uh, it's attached to a running EC2 instance but the instance must be stopped or the volume detached for some size changes so you'll have to basically stop the instance or you'll have to detach the volume from the instance and uh, then do the changes that you want to do so uh, whatever so there, there will be a certain downtime associated with it if you want to increase or decrease the storage capacity the other option you have is uh, you can simply attach new new EBS volumes so that you don't have any downtime the instance would still be running you can create a new volume attach it and then uh, simply mount it from the EC2 instance the next question you can expect is what is the difference between horizontal scaling and vertical scaling now this is a very generic uh, concept and a very generic question that you can expect as part of your auto scaling so horizontal scaling involves increasing the number of instances to uh, distribute the load so horizontal scaling is you know uh, like let's say you have two ec2 instances and there's a lot of load on these two instances now you want to handle that so what you can do is you can increase the number of instances so uh, in place of two instances maybe you can make it as five instances so this is your horizontal scaling where you're increasing the count increasing the number of machines the number of ec2 instances whereas your vertical scaling is uh, increasing the capacity of your existing machines Okay. increasing the capacity of your existing machines like increasing the CPU increasing the memory of your existing instances here under your vertical scaling we do not increase the number of machines rather we increase the capacity of the existing machine so if you have like let's say two machines we will increase the CPU we will increase the memory or the storage capacity of these two machines the next question you can expect is how does uh, Amazon CloudWatch and auto scaling work now we know that your Amazon CloudWatch is your monitoring service and auto scaling can be used to scale up and scale down your EC2 instances now how does these two uh, service work together now uh, auto scaling makes use of your CloudWatch to um, you know uh, decide when to increase the instances and when to decrease the instances so auto scaling can be used to scale up and scale down your uh, EC2 instances and Amazon CloudWatch auto scaling allows you to scale your Amazon uh, EC2 instances based on the conditions that you define. So uh, you will be defining the conditions in the auto scaling groups. All right. So here, when you create your um, auto scaling groups, all right, whenever you are creating this, you will be defining your um, conditions as to, you know, when do you want to scale up? When do you want to increase the instances or decrease the instances? Now, there should be something that monitors these conditions, right? So that's where your cl uh, Amazon CloudWatch comes in. So uh, like, let's say you want to increase the instances based on the CPU utilization. So the condition here would be a CPU utilization. So Amazon CloudWatch will monitor the CPU utilization and whenever the condition is met, it will tell your auto scaling group key, hey, the condition is satisfied and auto scaling group will launch more instances for you and this will ensure that the desired number of instances are always available to handle the load so that's how your auto scaling group and amazon CloudWatch work together to manage the scale up and scale down of your ec2 instances the next question you can expect is what is the significance of an elastic network interface or simply ENI so ENI it stands for elastic network interface so this is the network card so whenever we launch our uh, EC2 instances by default 
uh, ENI gets created. For example, here this is my EC2 instance. And if you go to this networking, and if I scroll down here, you should be able to see your network interfaces. Okay, so this is the network interface that is created for the EC2 instance that I have launched. Now this will contain all the network related information as to what is the public IP, the private IP, in which VPC the instance is running, in which subnet the instance is running, whether it has a, a, a elastic IP address, all that network related information will be stored within this elastic network interface. Right. So an elastic network interface is a virtual network interface that can be attached to an EC2 instance. So by default, you will get this network interface. Now, if you want additional network interfaces, you can always uh, do that. But this will be your primary network interface that gets attached to your EC2 instance. Now, it provides your network connectivity, security groups, IP addresses and all that related information. The next question you can expect is, can you attach an IAM role to an existing EC2 instance? Like, I already have an EC2 instance that is running. Now, can I attach an IAM role to this? For example, here if you see, the IAM role is empty and this is a running instance. Now, can I attach an IAM role to this? You can uh, do it. So, you can attach an IAM role to an existing EC2 instance uh, using the console or the CLI or the SDKs anywhere you want you can do it. So for this you do not have to stop the instance You can attach the IAM role on the fly and whatever the role you will attach uh, Will be reflected immediately. So we can change the IAM role on the fly when the instance is running or when it is in the running state So for this you can go to actions you can uh, go to security and here you can see modify IAM role and you can select the role that you want to attach. So let's say this role and just click on update IAM role and this will go ahead and update the role to your EC2 instance. So if you want to change a role, you can do this. You want to uh, add a new role, you can do this. So that's about the uh, 10 um, EC2 questions that we have as part of your uh, part 3 and this completes the very commonly asked questions that you have uh, in your um, uh, EC2 service. Um, in the upcoming sessions we will be looking at some scenario based questions as well but that's all for this session. Uh, I hope uh, you find this helpful and uh, uh, if there are any feedback please leave them in the comment sections. Uh, once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, um, please like and share the video. Thank you.